G'day YouTubers, Michael VK3 HAU here. So um, looking at uh, putting these passive infrared C bus controllers in the ceiling in the hallway. And um, I've got two for the hallway. I was going to use only going to use one, but I've decided to use two. And uh, the reason being um, the hallway's got a bit of a dog leg and I'll put one sort of on one corner of the dog leg and the other one on the other corner, just so it, uh, they trigger better. We've got our hole saw here, we've got our stud finder, and uh, we're gonna have a go at uh, installing these um, passive infrared detectors. So this is the hallway here, and there's a manhole up here, which we've seen in previous videos. We've got two lights here, then we've got a bit of a dog leg, goes around this way, and there's another light. I was originally just going to put one of the units up near the smoke detector. Now I'll turn the light on. Up here, I was originally going to put one up here next to the smoke detector, um, but I've decided that it will be too close to the smoke detector and might get a bit of a shadow effect, plus You've got this corner of this uh, wall here, uh, and I thought maybe it would be better off having, say, one in between these two lights and one over here above the bedroom door. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm wondering why I need to have a stud finder on the ceiling here. That's because there's metal battens that go across. There's metal battens, and I don't know where they are exactly, so I need to find where they are. So I don't want to be drilling my hole saw through a metal batten, because it will damage my hole saw. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Maybe here where there's a bit more light, I can show you. Lift this up. So there's metal battens here. So that. Go right over here. There's metal battens. So actually, looking at this, it's not too bad because the metal button's running straight down the middle. And there's the light. There's the light there. And the next light is over there. I don't know if you can see it. Anyway. And then we've got like one of these trusses. There's a truss here. Run along here metal truss so there's only a little bit of clearance between that metal truss and the ceiling so and that's probably around where I want to drill it should be right well, let's just do it so I'm standing inside the roof space here and over here is where we want to put the first passive infrared oh, the lights flaring out First passive infrared will go here somewhere, and the second one will go over in that corner over there. Um, the only problem with this roof space is um, the. Oh, I'll just flip this camera around. The um, house is uh, metal frame, and there's no actual um, beams that you can actually stand on. Uh, in the roof space itself, all of the, if I turn around, um, yeah, so all of the house's uh, ceiling is metal framed and they all, all hang off. 
the metal frame or the, the battens all hang off these trusses, these cross arm trusses here. And the, the only um, area where you can stand on is where there's top plates. If I pull this away, you can see there's a top plate there where there's actually a wall. Um, and even standing on those top plates, so it's only a thin, it's only thin metal, and uh, even standing on those top plates can be a problem. So the actual house can be a bit problematic for doing work inside uh, the roof space. So I've got these um, planks, they're an alloy, uh, aluminium plank, and um, I've got to drag them across two lots of trusses. So you've got trusses all the way along here and you can see the aluminium planks are actually um, uh, uh, across the trusses and when you're walking on the planks you're actually walking uh, with the, the weight on the actual truss itself. So what I need to do is I need to go over there and I need to grab that one and grab that one and grab this one and put them over this way so I can do work over this way. Another thing I'll show you too with this metal frame house while I'm up here uh, which is a bit different to a traditional wooden frame house all the power cabling all the power cabling here uh, so all this power cabling along there, along there all the way along here over there up in the back, up back there the whole house Every single power cable that goes to a, uh, a light or a power point is run off a continuary wire. So there's continuary wires here that run in all directions. And they've got, I don't know if you've seen that corner there, there's actually a turnbuckle over there. Hang on, I'll zoom in. So all the continuary wires are, uh, are tightened up with the turnbuckles, so they've, uh, they're under... Um, they're, they're under uh, a bit of tension and that that uh, allows all the cabling and I'll go over here and show you another bit yeah so if you look at the power cabling and the light cable or the um, light, light bulb cable power cable uh, it's all on continuary wire uh, all the high voltage cabling that is, it's all on the continuary wire all the way throughout the whole house and the reason for that is because this is a metal frame house and there's no wood uh, structure, no wood um, framing uh, no uh, wood sta um, uh, top plates or anything like that so you can't just go and pin all the um, high voltage cables to the wood studs or uh, plates or trusses or framing or anything like that. There's no uh, nowhere to put the cable in uh, as such, um, and you can't just you can't just have it laying on top of this uh, wool mat or wool insulation mat. Um, so yeah, the electrician we had to put in continuary cabling throughout the whole house and uh, there's a lot more cabling in this house than what would normally be the case because of the CBUS system. Uh, all the light circuits, every single light circuit uh, has got its own dedicated um, circuit, it's got its own dedicated power run and they all come back to this central point over here where they all go down in here into the controllers in a traditional house you just have um, a couple of runs of um, light circuits and they would daisy chain to the next light globe to the next light globe to the next light globe and you just have your switches cabling coming down the walls and just be switched on or off for that particular light in this CBUS configuration every single light globe has its own dedicated circuit going back to a controller and that's why there's so much cabling in this house bit different to the cat 5 data cables and the telephone uh, cables they're just strung up over the top of the trusses 
Um, it's low voltage stuff and it doesn't hurt really particularly matter how they're strung. Um, but yeah, the high voltage stuff is all on continuity wires. So there's the smoke detector cable. There's one of the light circuits. And there's the other one. And I think the simplest way to do this without actually uh, drilling from underneath and possibly hitting that uh, truss there, damaging my drill bit, I might poke a hole down and then I can see where I can then drill up from. So I'm going to measure between these two battens here because these battens should be evenly spaced across the ceiling. Actually what I'll do is I'll measure the light hole and see what spacing it is between the two battens. And then I'll do the uh, same thing here, poke a small screwdriver down and then drill up. So I've just measured this hole here and the distance between these two battens is 30 mil. So, and that hole is at 15 mil. So I reckon that's going to be uh, dead center. So we need to poke a hole 15 centimetres off one of the batten sides there. There we go, we've got our screwdriver through in the dead centre. So we just need to pull him up and put our hole through through the other side. There we go, one hole drilled in the centre of the hallway. Just need to mount our unit. Just a matter of pushing it into the hole. Pushing these tongues in, spring loaded tongues, and it should clip into place. There we go, done. Our unit is now mounted. All we're going to do is wire it up and do the other one around the corner. So we're over on this other corner of the, or the dog leg of the hallway now. We've got our planks set out so I can work over here. That's the one I just put in. So now I need to drill a hole over here. And you can see that's the wall, that's the uh, top plate of the wall there. That's the top plate of the wall with the doorway there. And here's the other top plate here of the other side of the wall in the hallway. So we want to be in the center here somewhere. And here is our other light circuit in the hallway, uh, as it says, hall. Um, so we, I want it to be on this side of that light next to the door. And actually you can see over here, uh, I'm getting this thing to focus, focus. I'll try moving my finger away first. Um, see there's a gland in the top plate. That's where you run normal uh, power cables down. If you had a light switch um, for, uh, traditional cabling in these houses that have the um, normal light switch cabling going down into there um, but this is all CBUS so all the CBUS cabling is actually internally inside the walls themselves because the CBUS cable all runs like a daisy chain um, from one switch to the next switch to the next switch um, yeah so that's uh, a different configuration okay so that's the second one installed around in the corner of this dog leg of the hallway and that's the other one. Rightio, so we've got it all wired up in the hallway there. I'm just in the laundry at the moment because the kids are in the bedroom and I don't want to disturb them by going in the hallway and talking in there and having them come out and asking what's going on. Um, so I've got it programmed. Um, so when the hallway is in the dark, the um, movement will set the lights to a low level. So it's like a night light. Uh, sort of thing and um, but if they turn the actual lights on at the switch um, the light is brighter and it will stop the sensors from coming on anyway so the sensors only activate if it's pitch black um, which I didn't want them to activate uh, if they've turned the light on and that will just cause problems um, because they'll have the two devices trying to work against the, the one system so we'll go in the hallway and I'll show you how it works. I'll have to turn this light off, otherwise it won't let the 
unit trigger. There we go, it's turned on. And after about, um, after about uh, 20 seconds, the lights will dim down and turn off. Which I just did. So if we get them to come back on, but if we turn the, quiet, turn the lights on. So turn the light. So the lights are now on with the wall switch. Um, now the um, passive infrared lights won't actually activate. The wall switch will turn the lights off after five minutes. So they're still timed, but um, just doesn't allow the um, passive infrareds to override that switch function. So if you like that video and uh, wanna see more of these type of videos, just mention in the comments, like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Cheerio.